Let's go. Pile them up. That was a good one. Today we are revisiting Genshin Impact, in particular Deluxe Special Recipe Pile Em Up, or also known as Once Upon a Time in Mondstadt. We're gonna be playing with some meat. I'm not gonna slap it. Why do people slap the meat? Be gentle to the meat. What did it do to you? Upgrade, ladies and gentlemen. Bite a mixer. It happened. I did sell some stuff, particularly my soul, but it happened. No, we're not putting the steak in the blender. We're making a beautiful herb oil, which you can use for any steak, fish, chicken. It's phenomenal and it's super universal. Now to make this herb oil paste, we're gonna need one bunch worth of parsley, four garlic cloves, one nice large shallot that you do have to dice up just to make it easy on the blender, 40 grams worth of basil, 20 grams worth of fresh oregano, and 30 grams worth of thyme. For the thyme, you can just throw it in there, it's gonna blend up really nicely. I would tell him to be gentle, but we're gonna blend it. Now for the oil, I'm using 500 milliliters of a blended oil. Paul obviously needs some Saito Chesto to get this 500 milliliters of oil out. Drop it directly into your mixer, place your lid on it, get this thing locked and loaded, and start blending it. It's going to slowly start to turn into a puree. Now, if you do want this to be a little more loose, you can add more oil, but I like the happy dance that this is producing. What is that face right now? After blending it completely smooth, we are left with this. Oh, yes. Now that you sound like Wario, grab all of your beautiful green goodness, place it into your container of choice, reserving some of it for the, stop eating it, reserving some of it for the steak. This holds well for about a week in the fridge. Now grab your meat, placing it onto a wire rack over a sheet tray lined with aluminum foil. This is gonna help with cleanup later. Luckily the guys over at Snake River already trust this for me, so we just need to season it very heavily on all sides with a good amount of salt. I'm using kosher salt because it is less salty and it's also really delicious. And then we're gonna crack a bunch of black pepper again on all sides of your meat. You wanna make sure that this has a good amount of coverage so it's seasoned really, really nicely. Now, once you get all of your seasoning on there, you wanna make sure that the tail piece of your filet is facing down. This way, when it starts to bake, it doesn't have a chance of opening up. Now, grab some of your herb paste slash herb oil and start rubbing down your meat with all of it. Why do I keep saying these weird innuendo things? Because macho. And make sure you do put some of that herb oil on the bottom as well, just to make sure that it is fully covered and it's fully seasoned. Now, we're gonna cook this to a beautiful rare, which is around 120 degrees. Fahrenheit. And to make sure we get that perfect temperature, I am using my meter meat thermometer. You guys have seen this before and they have sent in a couple for the 200,000 subscriber giveaway. We're giving one of them away to you guys. All you have to do is be subscribed, hit the like button, and let me know in the comments down below who your favorite Genshin Impact character is. I'd actually be very curious to know if it's more than just Lisa or Rosaria. I'll announce the winner over on Twitter after this month's Kickstarter so that way I can send out one of these to you guys. So make sure you follow me on Twitter. Now in probing a tenderloin, make sure you go in from the side. This is going to give you the most accurate reading as it has the best exposure on the thermometer. Now using the meter app, I'm going to set it to 120 degrees, pop this in my oven with my oven set at 200 degrees Fahrenheit and just let it go until it reaches temp. Now the interesting thing about this dish is it's basically a steak sandwich, no bread, but in lieu of the bread, we are going to make some really killer steak fries. It's kind of hard to tell in the picture if it's steak fries or if it's just roasted potatoes, but we are going to be making steak fries because steak, steak fries are better. That's the, that's the logic. Now I'm using some really nice russet potatoes for these steak fries, but feel free to really use any potato you want. This method will work really well for almost anything. Make sure you do trim down your potatoes to find that they're not the most beautiful potatoes, but don't worry, potatoes are versatile. So all you need to do if you have any bad parts on your potatoes, just cut them off and then proceed. I like to make sure that I cut my potatoes in half and then cut these into really thick batons for my steak fries. Each potato only yields around six to eight pieces per potato for my steak fries. You can see how thick these are after they're cut, just like Rosaria. Now pop all of your steak fries into a bowl and we're going to fill this thing with water to remove any excess starch. This is going to help with the cooking process later so make sure you don't skip this step. Let them soak for around 10 or 15 minutes while you're working with the other mise en place. Now for the rest of your mise en place you're just going to need a few cherry tomatoes sliced up. You actually don't need as many as I'm cutting here and you're also going to need a bit of leaf lettuce. I'm just choosing to use romaine and removing the ribs so it sits nice and flat on my plate. Now to get this water going for our steak potatoes make sure you heavily season it with salt and around 30 milliliters worth of vinegar. The vinegar is going to help fortify those potatoes and make them keep their structure. Now, once your water has come to a boil, place all of your potatoes in it. And I would recommend not placing all of them in there like I did simply because it cools down the water too much. And then you can end up with some mistakes like you're going to see in just a minute. But once your potatoes are fork or knife tender, which just means that they're soft enough to put a fork or a knife in it, remove all of your potatoes from the water and place them onto a sheet tray to cool down completely. Again, unfortunately, because I overcrowded my pot, I have some mistakes that we're still going to eat.
eat and they're going to be delicious, I promise. Even though some of the steak fries overcooked slightly, we have some really beautiful ones that held together really, really well. And we're also left with some of these really beautiful potato skins as a byproduct. Now don't throw those potato skins away. Those will deep fry beautifully and make an awesome garnish and a completely different texture to the dish. So don't waste your food. It's gonna be fine. Some of the little potatoes, I don't, maybe just turn that into mash or something. Once they've cooled down to room temp, pop them in the fridge until we're ready to fry them. And now our steak is ready. It has hit 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, hello, beautiful. After whispering sweet nothings to your tenderloin in the oven, make sure you remove it to allow it to rest for around 10 or 15 minutes. This thing still needs to be finished, so keep that in mind. Working over here. This is what I have to deal with. <laughs> So after the gremlin has left the kitchen, we gotta let this filet rest for at least 15 minutes before we reverse sear it. You don't actually wanna reverse sear immediately because it won't have time to like let all those juices just kinda settle. So just leave it here. Make sure you clean these right away. You know, don't let this sit around. That's not cool. So now while everything is resting, we actually get to get these steak fries ready to go. And yes, look, I do have a stove. It's a real stove. Now I filled my wok halfway up with oil and set it to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it reached that temp, I started dropping in some of my potatoes only about six to seven at a time to make sure that the oil didn't cool down too much while they were frying. Make sure that the potatoes don't stick together and after around six to eight minutes, these should be nice and G-bad. Remove them from the oil and place them on a plate with some paper towel to drain any excess oil. Remember to fry off some of those skins because those are gonna be delicious as well. Now, once you remove these from the oil, make sure you do season them immediately with salt. Now to sear off our filet, get a pan ripping hot. Can, can we get an enhance on here? Thank you. Get a pan ripping hot and start searing off all of the sides of your tenderloin. This is gonna give it a beautiful crust, watching out for any flare-ups. Don't worry, it won't hurt you that much, maybe just a little hair. And make sure you do sear all the sides, the top, the bottom, everything needs to be seared because then this will happen. There it is. There it is. <laughs> You're gonna let that rest. Oh wait, air out the house? No, I didn't do anything. Let your steak rest. While I was trying to get the fire alarms to turn off, our steak is now fully rested. So, you know, I guess it's a win-win, win-lose. After airing out your house, remove all the twine from your rested filet mignon and get this thing ready to slice. And Kohai, can we plus ultra that like button for this reaction? There, oh God, oh God. And you know what? I'm gonna let him take over after this enhancement because he says it way better than I will. Oh my God, the camera is not gonna do it justice. That is perfect all the way throughout like oh my goodness okay we're gonna get three of those it just it's so tender doing that reverse sear my oh yes look at the center that's the rare that's what you want with the filet. Don't overcook your filets. Now to plate up, grab that leaf lettuce and line the plate on the bottom with that leaf lettuce. This is gonna help catch any extra juices. Stack one piece of your filet, followed by two pieces of your provolone cheese, followed by two pieces of your beautiful steak fries, another piece of steak, another two slices of cheese, another two pieces of potato, the third slice of steak, the last piece of cheese, two pieces of potato, a little cherry tomato, one of those beautiful fried potato skins that we did just for that little bit of extra, and a touch of basil, and there it is, pile em up slash once upon a time in Mondstadt from Genshin Impact. It is a monster. The only thing more stacked than this and Lisa are my brand new cookbooks over on Kickstarter. Check them out in the link below. We have fully illustrated recipes from some of your favorites here on the channel. We've surpassed the funding goal and we're into those stretch goals for my Annie Bites cookbooks, volume one and volume two. I'm really excited to get these out to you guys. They're gonna come signed and to support everyone here on the channel as well, I'm doing a giveaway of both books. All you have to do is be subscribed, hit that like button, and let me know in the comment down below who your favorite husbando or waifu is from Genshin Impact. I'm gonna be picking one winner and announcing them over on Twitter. Thank you guys so much for all the support so far. I can't wait to see where this all goes. Now let's let's dig into this, shall we? How do we, this is one of those dishes where you don't understand like how to start eating it. So I'm gonna just start from the top. The first thing I'm gonna eat is this potato. This is what I'm actually really excited about is this potato skin. Let's see if I can get any. Oh yeah, and then the steak fry, look at it. It's beautiful on the inside and on the outside. Oh, oh my God. The reason why I like steak fries the most is because they don't carry a lot of oil inside the potato, just on the outside. That's why I really like steak fries. Oh no, look, another steak fry. Oh, oh, tomato. You know what? No, no, that's ridiculous. We're gonna utilize the world's cutest cutting board. Place our steak right there with the cheese on there, like butter. Can you guys look at, oh, oh, cheers. You almost don't have to chew. Reverse searing steak, by far one of the best methods I've ever used. Just like one of the best methods I've ever used is picking up my books over on Kickstarter at the links below. My name is Chef BK, get subscribed. Remember, keep playing with your food. Yo, this steak is fire. This steak is so good right now. Oh my God.